Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about contrast. Why contrast? Well, because it is the most fundamental characteristic of an image. It can make it feel airy, heavy, or it can make it feel more digital or filmy. There are two main ways to add contrast to an image. We've got linear contrast and we've got S-curve contrast. In this episode, we'll look at what are the main differences between the two and also how I personally like to go about it. Without further ado, let's dive in. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about contrast and mainly the differences between linear contrast and S-curve contrast. So what is linear contrast? So to demonstrate that, I'm going to go to my grayscale ramp and you see that I've got an S-curve right here, which is coming from my output transform. So I'm going to disable it right here. Output color space, I'm going to set to same as timeline. If you want to know more information about how I'm set regarding color management, I encourage you to see my color page basics video that I did a while ago. I leave a link down in the description. So now you see that we've got a straight line and here is my black point and here is my white point. And I'm going to add contrast using my contrast slider right here. You can drag here, but I'm going to use my panel for that. So there I'm adding contrast and there I'm subtracting contrast. And you see that when I'm subtracting contrast, I'm reducing the distance between my white and black point right here. Before it was there, now it's there. See, so I'm kind of reducing the distance and that reduces contrast. And if I do the opposite, it adds contrast. To summarize, adding contrast increases the distance between the white and the black point and decreasing contrast reduces the distance between the white and the black point. And now I can't talk to you about contrast without mentioning pivot right here. And pivot, you see that if I disable my contrast node before, after, you see that this value over here doesn't really get moved. But now if I change my pivot point and I place it right here, for example, before after, you see that it's rather this portion of my signal that isn't moving. So you can change that position basically when you work on your pivot. So that is linear contrast because that straight line remains straight. Now we're going to explore what S-curve contrast is. So for that, I'm going to go into my project settings right here and I'm going to go to my general options and see here there is use S-curve for contrast and I have it unticked right at the moment. So look at what happens when I enable that and hit save. Look at the grayscale ramp. Look at what happens to it. Boom, then it becomes an S-curve and you see that my black point position remains unchanged and so is the same for my white point. And you see that if I exaggerate my contrast, it'll look even more S-shaped like so. Now if we pay close attention to what the middle portion of our S-curve looks like, we can see that it looks very similar that what we've got going on with linear contrast. What actually changes is that now we've got a shoulder and a toe and the values are being compressed in the toe and the shoulder parts of our curve. Okay, so now we've discussed about the technical differences between linear and S-curve contrast, but let's actually see what happens on images. So I'm going to reset my node, straight line is back, and I'm now going to enable my output transform. I'm going to color management, output color space and go rec 709 gamma 2.4 and it hits save. So we've got our S curve that is back, but this is from our output transform. 
So now let's jump to this shot. I'm going to add some S-curve contrast to this shot. And I'm going to crank it before, after, before, after. And now let's see what happens to this image when I change to linear contrast. I'm going to untick use S-curve for contrast right here and hit save. Look closely what happens to the image. You see that the dark portions of the image and the bright portions of the image are getting more extreme. It's getting a bit more crushed and it's looking less elegant. Let me switch back to S-curve contrast so you can see it one more time. I'm going to hit save. Yeah, there you go. So see, it's getting more elegant and looking a bit more filmy here. Now, the reason why S-curve contrast looks more elegant than linear contrast is because our top and low code values are being compressed in the shoulder and the toe of our curve. So now that you see the visual differences between the two, let me tell you what I prefer using and why. So as a general practice, I would use S-curve contrast as a global adjustment. And then if I have differences between the shots, I would rather use linear contrast using lift and gain, for example. So if I want to reduce my contrast here, I can do lift and gain. See the difference before, after, before, after. But if I go to my timeline level and disable my contrast, it's still there. Now to summarize, I would say that I use S-curve contrast one time in a grade and usually that would impact all the shots in a scene and to correct for the differences shot to shot i would use linear contrast in the form of contrast and pivot or lift and gain for example all right guys that's it for today i hope that you found this episode helpful please leave a like comment down below let me know about future topics you would like me to cover Come and say hi on Instagram and do not forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss future updates and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.